Kemeni Nyamani Amana. In the headlines, Professor Evans at Amels to be buried at the Flagstaff House. And meanwhile, President John Mahama joined the late president's extended family in a Kumfi Otium to mourn his boss. We bring you the compelling story of mothers with sick twin children in the northern region and the ordeal of the family that they have to go through, including being forced to beg. In business, Bank of Ghana and SNET make moves to reduce their investment in the banking sector. Also in, ent in entertainment, Lucky Menses' hat is broken and we'll be finding out why. And Ghanaian boxer declared unfit to participate in the Olympics underway. And London, I'll come away your way in sports. But these and more, please stay with us. Now, the Minister of Communications, Haruna Idrisu, has given an indication that the late President John Evans at Mills would be buried at the Flagstaff House in Accra. President John Dramani Mahama is said to have taken the decision which would see to it that a portion of the Flagstaff House is dedicated to the burial of presidents and other high-ranking officials of the country. This was disclosed by the Minister of Communication on Joy FM and Multi TV's news analysis program, Newsfile. The late president's family has scheduled his burial and funeral service from August 8 to 10. Has, uh, directed that a particular location at the Flagstaff House now be dedicated and reserved purposely for the burial of presidents of Ghana in the event of death or even former president should all be located at a particular uh, uh, site within the Flagstaff uh, house built by President Nkrumah. So I think that we can say that uh, we've managed the transition so far so well, but we need to complete the second leg. Meanwhile, MP for Kankwe South and Communications Director of the Opposition New Patriotic Party, Nana Akumia, has expressed displeasure with the NDC's National Executive Committee meeting to select a flag bearer for this year's election when a nation is still mourning the death of the president. The biggest bereaved party in this matter. That they couldn't hold on for one week when the president had declared a one-week mourning period at which flags should fly at half mass, they couldn't wait for the flags to go up. They had to rush to this neck meeting and then take this decision which is triggering all kinds of internal political strife, which is fouling up the, the, the period. I, I'm very, very disappointed. Right? Now, a visit to the NDC party headquarters and the East Airport residence of former President Atta Mills indicated that most party members might have joined the president on his day trip to Cape Coast. The atmosphere at the NDC headquarters was somehow empty. All indications are that most party members may have accompanied the president to the family house of the former president in Cape Coast. The few members there were in a sober mood as despair was written on their faces. But the country continues to mourn the death of the former president John Evans at Tamils. NDC party members and supporters at the Nya Sochum constituency in their own small way have organized a ceremony to mourn the death of the former president. <laughs> Clad in black, red, and the NDC party colors, party members and supporters drummed and danced to mourn the death of the late president, Professor John Evans Atamels. Others also looked on sadly as the others sang, drummed, and danced. They paid tribute to the former president. The family should have my condolence and also the family and the national executive and also for that matter the entire NDC in the country. We pray that Almighty Allah uh, take his soul to the highest heaven. On my own behalf um, and on behalf of the Anyasu to constituency, uh, we want to send our deepest condolence to first the former first lady, Dr. Nadu Mers and their extended family as well, and his child. May his spirit be behind the party and be behind Ghana. So the agenda he has for moving Ghana 
to the right destination, we shall get there. We are still mourning our lost president. This is a big loss to us. I know nationally we are having the morning, we are still in the morning era. But in our own small way here, we want to show how great the loss has been to all of us. That is why we've organized ourselves here to mourn. Let's be genuine for once. People now come out to say things deep within them, their hearts. Why can't you say it? I will say he's a total embodiment of leadership. While in morning mood, said in Atamaklo, a pharmacist by profession, and the coordinator for the National Youth Authority in a solemn mood, filed her nomination at the Enya Sotum constituency office to contest for the seat as a member of parliament in the area. Before addressing her fans and sympathizers, she called for a minute of silence for the departed soul of the late president. She then went ahead to enumerate what she brings on board when on voted into power. I've worked with young people from working from the youth authority. I understand the challenges that they go through in terms of looking for jobs, uh, their social well-being, uh, their health and sexuality, amongst other issues. And I'm ready to work with them for them to understand that they need to develop themselves as young people and take advant the advantages that are being offered by government and not sit back and wait every day for someone to give you a handout. It's better to give someone the opportunity to know how to fish than to hand over fish to them. It's to empower the women, teach them how to learn to become entrepreneurs, to be able to start their own small businesses and be able to generate revenues for themselves. The Enya Sotum constituency is one of the two new constituencies created out of the old Wager constituency in the Ga South Assembly. Now, people from all walks of life today thronged the late President Mills' family home in Cape Coast to either console the bereaved family or catch a glimpse of President John Dramani Mahama during his visit to express his condolence. Amidst music, dancing and gestures, the people expressed their pain over the death of the late president. <laughs> His Excellency John Mahama, who was mobbed on arrival, indicated that Ghana has lost a great president, brother, and a father. He said the former president gave him space to operate as a vice president and was honored for that, adding that his faith strengthened all of us and asked the family to take heart since the entire country stands by them. I believe I'm the luckiest vice president in the world. John, I trust you can do it. You repose absolute trust in me. Anytime there was tribulation and I felt troubled, I went to him. He calmed me down. And he always said, John, I trust you. I like the work you're doing. Carry on. Anytime we had problems in government, sometimes I despaired. Sometimes we are very difficult challenges. And his disposition always calmed me. Central Regional Minister Ama Benyuado, who accompanied President to Mills' family house, also paid glowing tribute to the late president. The chief of staff, Mr. Henry Mante Newman, gave a testimony of the former president. That he signed as the president of the Republic of Ghana. I was there. It was about 8.39 a.m. in the morning on Tuesday. So he was still quite sound, still quite substantially lettered, still quite knowledgeable, knowing what he was doing. And we used to pray. Whenever I met him, we prayed. We sealed our conversation with press and we even had... Still in the late president's home, his first cousin, Frank Bo Emisa, 
has directed that all those seeking information about the late president to go to his family house. He made the comment when the chiefs of Commander Edina Egwafo Ebrim and the municipal chief executive Isaac Kwekusam called on the family to express their condolences. The chiefs also poured libation for his departed soul and for the ghost to unravel the truth surrounding his death. Well, back in the capital, our roving team also made a stop at the Kanishu market to capture the mood and reactions of traders and shoppers to the death of Professor John Evans at Amels. Just like elsewhere, the proof of grief and mourning was very visible. It's been four days now since the former president, John Evans at Amels, passed on, and some people still cannot come to terms with his sudden death. Yet he says, see at all. Hey, it's a bucket and I am not going to cry because I am a young Casa Sata Wadai. I am a Yapa Sata Wadai. We are all bound to die, and he wasn't feeling fine. So if he is dead, yeah, it's understandable. But one thing is that the way Ghanaians in general we talk about our leaders is bad. We sit on radio stations and on TV stations to talk jazz about them, which is very bad. This should teach us a big lesson as to how to talk about our leaders. Musumi Shami. Ajaka wa papani. Ona ehe jo. Ne sumo mo fame. O wo wo sumo le. O wo gbini wo nuye wo fua. Ye ni. Ashe three days. Ni edo mi wa. Ata mo se wo no wo enu. The Tuesday no mi ti enu. Bibi ye mi. It's a shocking, it's shocking to the extent that it touched all of us because he's the, the number one citizen in Ghana. Do you get it? He's the number one citizen in Ghana. So at least we feel the pain because at least it's like when you, when you don't know about it and your father is dead. So we, we, we feel the pain and, uh, and we, are, we are still mourning him for the one week that the, the president said we should mourn him. That's why we are all wearing red. Even though former President Mills is no more, some say they would remember him as one of the peaceful presidents they ever had. Asum Jehine, Demini Faji. But it's been four days since President John Mahama was sworn into office. As the constitution mandates, he's supposed to nominate someone for the position of vice president. Now, names of several NDC officials have been mentioned as potential candidate. But the president is yet to make a choice. Lobbyist groups, party loyalists and individuals within and without the ruling NDC have all been lobbying for a candidate for their choice, of their choice rather. So we head to the streets of Accra to find out people's preference of who the vice president should be. They should select Hana Tete. I think she's the right person to handle that position. If she is faced into it, then she has to. Because women are capable and we are men's helpmates, so why not? I don't think anything should stop her from being a vice president. If only she can really do the job. I think Hannah Tete will be the best because uh, I think the Ghana politics has just been one way side that is only men. I think if they introduce a lady, it will balance gender. So I think Hannah Tete will be, if only she's among the nominees. Well, I think for me, for me personally, I think he's the best man. He's the, he's the best, he's the right person to, uh, vice president to so choose. I know him for so many years, from, since a uh, time. So I think he's the best. Spiel Well, I think he has uh, done a lot for the party. He vied for the presidency some time ago with the late president. And I think he's, he's very good intellectually, politically he's too, he's very mature and can give this support to the president, uh, uh, president and they will be a good pair, I think so. And I tell you, say, last of your program, you're a lawyer, 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 you're a l
Otume lobby ya mo nu nya vote obi ana on call parliament na otume lobby ya nya vote kra chen president no. Which means an charisma ne na de no am say otume touch base no. Into be no e ma no so ye ho beto ye. Vice name to say am famako ko ni de ho. Oye enipa oye ababu no ne ho de ne. Ana ye say so the the aduro no ye mpe obi a e chena na ye pe ye de ne ko ba bia na won timi nko ye hia obi a wa ya babu no betima ye adwuma no abo aye so ye me ma no sa na me su su se ye de ma na ye o mi de mi pe ona bo sam wo fu swamp of if you say unse professor ames no ba ye o de na dwi nyina esi youth no so ono so o ye obi a o se de nyi too much ntimi me fi se so timi nya vice president na the next year na john mahama be ko no ono so betima be the next president Now, drivers plying the Sunyai in Konsia Road in the Bonohafu region have threatened to stage a massive demonstration against the deplorable state of the highway. The drivers say there are numerous petitions to the highway authority to reconstruct the road have fallen on deaf ears. Our Bonohafu regional correspondent Nestor Kafui Ajoma visited the area and has filed this report. The wobbly portion of the Sunyai Nkonsia Highway has impeded free flow of travel and economic activities between Sunyai, Boko and Wenchi. Whenever it rains, travelling on this road becomes close to impossible, which compels drivers to charge rip-off fares. Reconstruction works on this road began during the former NPP administration but failed to continue. A journey of about 45 minutes now takes one and a half hours due to the bad state of the road. Even though the state of this highway calls for immediate attention, the authorities are yet to respond to the numerous pleas of commercial drivers whose livelihood depend on this road. John Abaya is a taxi driver on the Sunyai Nkonsia Highway. He says he visits the mechanic after every trip on this highway. <laughs> Another driver, Kweku Paul, also expressed his unhappiness with the waste of time and appeals for assistance in reconstructing this stretch of road. Uh, they should do something about it. Yeah, other than that, um, it gives us problems in one way or the other. Because uh, sometimes by the end, time you cover the distance, you might uh, experience one or two falls in the car. So at least they should do something about it. Even if not tarring it, they should use a grader to uh, level it so that uh, the pot wells, not pot holes, should be covered so that we can move comfortably. Information gathered by Joy News indicates that contract for reconstruction has already been awarded, but it is unclear why work is yet to begin. The Brongahafo Regional Minister was not available for his comment. Now, in some parts of the northern region, mothers of twins with serious health conditions and deformities have a lot more to contend with than the burden of care and emotional pains. Religion or spiritism is imposing untold hardships on some of these women, including forcing them to go begging with your frail children. It's a harsh world for these women and their children. Mohammed Hashmin has been talking to one and filed this report. One healthy child is a joy, but sickly twins is somehow a burden, and the only way out is to beg. Perhaps that's what mothers of twins with some deformities are being told, having to comb through the streets for handouts for their children. Majority of this type of beggars come from far away in neighboring villages in Tamale and pitch camp at the central business town very early in the morning each day from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and beyond to begin their daily operation of calling out for alms from passers-by. The beggars pulled their children along the street for several hours under scorching sun and heavy rain sometimes. But this is not the only source of worry. The environment in which they sit to beg is very dirty, worse still for the children. Abdullahi Awabu yeah. is a beggar and a resident of Kalipuhini, a suburb of Tamale. Mm. She is 28 years old, married to a farmer with twin female children, Asana and Fusena. They both live in an extended family house where access to a three-square meal is a luxury. Awabu starts the daily begging activity in her area, moving from house to house, carrying her twins 
till they get to the central business town on foot, which takes several hours. On her way today, Asana, one of the twin, prompts to respond to nature and so had to let her free herself on the bare floor before continuing their journey. Sometimes her children's plea for arms is greeted with physical abuse from irate pedestrians. Our boo intimated to join news that exactly a year ago she gave birth to twins who often fell ill. Her in-laws and grandfather's consultation of spiritualists to address the issue revealed the only solution will be for them to go begging. The spiritualist claimed to have communicated with the spirit of the children, which indicated they wanted their mother to go begging with them for society to criticize her, and she failed to do so. She will know no peace and will eventually die. Not even the sacrifices of fowls and sheep to appease the spirits of her twins could appease them. And so finally had to hit the road begging and has been doing this for almost a year and a half now. This is Hawabu's grandfather, Imoro Yakubu, who has been consulting the spiritualist. Hawabu's grandfather told us the twins were paralyzed after birth, so he consulted a spiritualist to find out why the condition persisted and was instructed to send the twins begging with their mother. He said our we started by going through mosques in their community, begging. But that did not please the twins, as they just wanted their mother to go to town begging. And that's how she has been all over the place with her trade. We spoke to the spiritualist Kalipoham Achiri, who cautioned that the situation of the twins and their mother wasn't a joke, adding that some mothers in similar situations have lost their lives for refusing to obey. The spiritualist told me Awabu can only stop begging after her twins are fully grown from the age of six and beyond. And if she refuses to obey the instructions of the twins, she or her husband will die. Well, sad and worrying, but some with cleft lips and pearlies can afford to smile because medical practitioners, NGO representatives and volunteers from different parts of the world have started screening people with that defect. For a surgery which starts on Monday, July 30, now about 150 people with cleft lips and pearlies have so far been screened in the two-day screening exercise dubbed Operation Smile at the Ridge Hospital in Accra. The screening is to ensure that they are medically fit for a safe surgery and can boldly smile afterwards. Now, viewers must be warned that the visuals are quite disturbing. Smiles are emotional communicators, touching and captivating. In spite of differences such as culture, race or religion, the roles smiles play are one and the same. A smile is a facial expression formed by flexing the muscles near both ends and throughout the mouth. It's a scene in the eyes too and normally denotes pleasure, joy, happiness, and amusement. Notwithstanding, some people's smiles cannot be well appreciated due to a defect known as cleft palate or craniofacial defect, which affects the appearance of their faces. Craniofacial defect could be a small notch or a complete split in the lip that goes all the way to the base of the nose. Although it is normally passed on genetically, there are other causes to this facial defect. Emmanuel Mensa is an operation room nurse. He highlights some of these causes. If we talk about cleft palate or cleft lip, um, it represents or it presents itself in the form of a deformity of the lips or the palate. The palate is the upper roof of the mouth and it always has to be closed. And if it's not closed at a particular age in life, then it becomes a deformity. Food that is supposed to go down passes through the nasal cavity, the child can aspirate. And with the lip, it's easily seen as a deformity. The lip is not complete like mine. You see, some, it, it becomes uh, like gaped. Some parts of it is gaped. The defect is mostly seen in children. Some are born with it, but with others, it is realized within a year after they are born. A person with a cleft lip or palate doesn't only face feeding and speech problems. Some of these children face gross stereotype in school, while some adults with the defect are shunned by their peers. 
de agro cacra no me cae ni ni cacra ni o no te ni no hace ni cacra no 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 apay a mí a mí de sirme te si a mí te voy a crear un betrón muy chévere no más sobre el film chévere no me co a mí un pez me ni un me ni un betrón the situation is set to transcend just a surgery for this reason psychologists interact with the children in every way possible while some patients did not know what to expect till the surgery is done some believe their faces will look better after the surgery. Igrisa, a 58-year-old man and a father of four, is optimistic about the surgery. He is certainly right because Abigail Adache, a representative from the Lions Club, affirms. Fortunately, the team is made up of various groups. It's only doctors, uh, the surgeons, they have uh, clinical psychologists, they have um, um, psychologists for children. All, you, the team is a wonderful team. They are from different backgrounds and they, every, each and every one of them is doing their work. So we just help around, especially in translation. Uh, if we get people who can speak the English language, if it's Ga, Eve, Chi, what have you, we do the translation. I mean the lions. Coordinator of Operation Smile expressed her gratitude and appreciation to all sponsors and collaborators who helped to make this operation free of charge. Operation Smile would very much like to thank their many partners. Um, we've worked closely with MTN, Lions Club, uh, Coconut Grove Hotel, Ridge Hospital, Corley Boo Hospital, uh, KPMG, Peace Corps, uh, the Latter-day Saints, and many, many others. So thank you very much for everybody who's come together and supported us. About 150 people were already waiting their turn when Joy News arrived at the Ridge Hospital. Now back to issues around the presidency. Being the president of a nation may seem the best of jobs anyone could think about, but in reality it is a very Herculean task. Taking over from the late president in an election year might make John Mahama's job as president perhaps a lot more difficult than it actually is. Nonetheless, what expectations do Ghanaians have of President Mahama, especially from the opposition? President Ramani Mahama is seen as humble and down to earth which his fans say makes him the perfect replacement for the late Professor John Evans Atta Mills. In a state of mourning and in a crucial election year, what expectation would Ghanaians have of President Mahama? My first point of call was the offices of the minority leader in parliament, Oseiche Mensa Bunsu. The new president between now and December is not too long a time, but I hope that even the little time that he has, he used the period to reconcile the nation. Former PNC MP for Zebula, John Ndebugri, has his own expectation anyway. Because there, are, there have been cracks in, in the party, you know, prior to the demise of uh, the late president. And so the mantle now falls on him, and he has this heavy task of making sure that he moves very quickly to unite the NDC as a prelude to uniting the whole nation. That's his first task. President John Mahama appears to be receiving support already from a section of the political parties, including the Progressive People's Party. Um, what we will do is to continue to um, come up with um, policies and then somehow criticize the government somehow to ensure that uh, they do the right thing. If the president finds it necessary to apply or to, 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 to speak to us, to seek reverence to some of our policies which he might want to implement, I guess our doors will be welcome to, to share and then to somehow work along with them if they need our support. As a communicator, he may have several professional and personal acquaintances among journalists. So, I asked Director of Ghana Institute of Journalism, David Newton, what his expectations of the new president are. Well, I believe as a government, they have an educational policy, which the government is, has been implementing. And therefore, I think he has a very short time to quickly look at what has been done, what is left to be done so that together with his cabinet, they can quickly 
look at what could be done within this uh, short period of time before elections. When we hit the streets, everyone seems to have the same expectation. To me, I would like uh, Mr. Mahama, our President Mahama, to do very good things, you know, more especially for peace to prevail so far as we are entering the election time. I want him to continue the good works that the late president started. He has a tax to perform. That is why he was elected vice president. So I don't know. I think what the, uh, the past president planned to do before the end of the year, I think when he continued doing that. We expect him to do all the things President Mills wasn't able to do before he left us. Yeah, from the original CY. Say, see, our vice president, say, say, we're your president. Me and I say, I'm quite here, my auntie, we're your auntie, you're my 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 auntie. Months to the December polls seem long but short, and if there is any way you can play a part in sustaining Ghana's peace and stability, regardless of political affiliation, do not hesitate. <laughs>
Kokoi and firing of small guns, referred to as maskachi. Traditional drumming, singing and dancing ended the ceremony, after which a deba was held to discuss the theme for this year's homowo. Although the ceremony took place, many people felt the usual fun associated with Kokoi sprinkling and homowo deba was missing, possibly because of the death of Professor Mills. Sheikh Mustafa was in quarter as the administrator of the Guasu Secretariat and explained why they couldn't postpone the celebration of Homo. Although we are celebrating Homo, but you can see the people, if not for the death of the president, I tell you, this place will be turned upside down. But because of, like I said, the low-key celebration that we are having, so it has affected us a lot. And I don't know what will happen in two weeks' time, because in two weeks' time when the president will be buried, I don't think anybody will even have the time or even the, the mind to put any food on fire to cook. We are mourning him, but uh, Nungwa celebrated their home war about three weeks or more ago, and they start usher in the gang on war celebration, followed by the Lante Janwe. We are of the opinion that when we break this, we do not celebrate with automatically, we're going to cause problems for the rest of the, the gang people. Asure Jaseche, an acting manche, who is to host people for the main event in August, also felt the lawmakers should have consulted them before fixing the date for the burial of the former president. The owners of the land must be consulted before a thing like this got to happen. But they say they are the legislators and I think they are making big laws for themselves, so they should continue. However, they had farewell messages for the late president. On behalf of Kwak Pachewe, royal family of Asne, express our condolence to all the people of Ghana. We wish the Lord will keep him in his bosom and have a restful place to stay. Humbawa means hooting at hunger and it is celebrated every year to usher in the new crop season. But will the girls who at hunger this year or not? <laughs>
So what is the advertising cost for losing President Mills? Now, even though some Ghanaians are yet to come to terms with the sudden demise of the former president, the swearing-in of former Vice President John Dramani Mahama as president of the nation clearly attests to the fact that the former president is no more and he also neither occupies any position in the country or the NDC as a party. But with this reality comes many implications, including what happens to political advertising that had captured the former president as flag bearer in the December polls. Will his image is still hold any relevance, especially to the candidates of the party towards their campaigns? Tuesday, 24 July 2012, will forever remain in the history books of Ghana as a darkest day when death laid its icy hands on her president, John Evans Atamels. Western region, Ghana's first oil region, historically commissioned by the late president, is still in mourning. Red bands tied on doors of offices, as well as around the neck of residents spotted in the metropolis, with brisk business activities yet to pick up. Hitherto, parliamentary candidates of the NDC in the region had started brisk campaigning for the 2012 polls. Mounting billboards and posting posters at vantage points, some with images of the former president. Late Professor Mills, as candidate Mills for the December polls, had also received massive outdoor campaigns in the region. But with his demise, the question will be what happens to the vehicles and billboards, as well as posters and banners that have been embossed with the images of the former president. Would the parliamentary candidates of the NDC, who had strategically positioned their images beside the former president, replace it or maintain it? As at now, Ankata has been already been portrayed, portrayed throughout the whole Ghana. But we are, now we are electing a new a fly bearer. Now it, it's a very serious thing. We have to go to interviews. Some of the uh, illiterate, now that we have to uh, introduce to them our new fly bearer. So if you add the two at the same time, there will be a conflict of a uh, distance. Removing them anytime soon or later will still bring an added cost to NDC candidates' election budget. But the immense grief and general mood seem to tolerate any inconvenience that will keep the late professor's memory alive. <laughs> Still in business, a recent torrential rainfall has disrupted trading activities at the popular Winchy Thursday market. The rainwater virtually flooded the market, making it difficult for traders and shoppers to conduct business as usual. Thursday is a popular market day at Wenchi, one of the most vibrant markets in the Bonawahafu region, with traders and buyers converging from all over the country to take advantage of great bargains and fresh produce. Yet, this major trading center is the least developed market one can see. There are no sheds for the traders, and so together with their wares, have to often battle bad weather. Apart from a little portion of the lorry station that is tarred, the rest of the market and the lorry station are neither tarred nor paved. Our cameras captured slippery and muddy floors, difficult to use for trading. As we meandered our way through the mud and flood water, we spotted some traders helplessly packing their wares, even though there was no place to keep them. Others who had already packed were policing their items from thieves and rain. Fresh produce, including okra, garden eggs, tomatoes, among others, were displayed on the bare floor in the pool of flood water. Trader, a dragiman, does not understand why they should be going through such an ordeal. <laughs> this is Grace Ansa. She's so mad at the city authorities for denying them the benefits of their taxes. <laughs> The traders say this eyesore is a ritual every rainy day, which is quite common given the topography of Wenchi. So they ask for how long can they continue to endure this? If there's anybody who was hard hit by the news of the death of Professor Atamils, perhaps it is Lucky Mensa. Lucky says when his wife first informed him of the sad news for about five minutes, he went blank. Well, thank God Lucky is doing well and he says he has just been through 
with composing a tribute song for the memory of the late president, Etta Mills. Since 2008, Lucky Mansa has been composing songs for the National Democratic Congress, NDC, particularly for the late President Mills' campaign and governance. His song in Kratro became controversial to the Mills administration, and recently, Lucky threatened to sue the NPP if they went ahead to use the song as their campaign song. But the stressed Lucky says in Kratro seems to have lost its relevance and would no longer drive any message for the opposition NPP. Lucky Mensa says Professor's death does not end his relationship with the NDC and that he will continue to compose songs for the party and for President Dramani Mahama. Lucky disclosed that he has already composed a tribute song for former President Mills, which is hitting the airwaves tonight. He gave us a sneak preview of the tribute. <laughs> Now, rapper Assem has once again showcased his lyrical abilities after the untimely death of President Mills. He quickly put together lyrics and titled it Dear John. Assem says the song seeks to encourage Ghanaians to celebrate the good works and legacy of the late president. <laughs> The creative industry is paying tribute to the life and legacy of Ghana's past president, Professor John Evans Atta Mills. The Bye Bye hit maker Assem is the one who leads the chart of tribute songs to the memory of Professor Mills. Assem talked about the song which is titled Dear John, the refugee, which he featured AC High Life legend Pat Thomas. Assem says he wrote the song in celebration of the late president's life and good deeds. According to him, it is more of a chess song rather than a dirge. He said his choice in collaborating with Pat Thomas was to help the song break generational barriers. Now, Ghana's representative at a Big Brother Star Game reality show, who has arrived in the country from South Africa, has encouraged Ghanaians to show interest and take part in the competition. Keita says the Big Brother competition offers a beautiful platform for nationals to project their countries and showcase their traditional values, not just to Africa, but to the world at large. He held his arrival press conference this morning. Born Keita Osei, Keita says it has always been his dream to become famous like his former dad, fashion designer Ricky Osei, and his elder brother, hip life grandpapa Reggie Rockstone. Keita says entering into the Big Brother competition has been an eye opener for him and urges that more Ghanaians should participate so they can project the image of Ghana in a positive light. Um, being in the house as a Ghanaian was, <laughs> was, was, was beautiful because, you know, I like to display what my culture what I what I know about my country and everybody in the house was also doing the same thing you know but I was really proud of mine you saw the Azonto moves and everything yeah it was crazy like that um, but it was it was it was a very good experience um, I would encourage people to go next year you know Ghana was represented in the Big Brother house by comedian DKB fashion designer and model Keita and musician Izzy who is the fiance of Keita Keita is the last to have been evicted among the three Ghanaians. One would have expected that Izzy would be at the airport on Keita's arrival and at the press conference to give her fiancé moral support. The latest star on the block says Ghana should watch out for his new clothing line. Keita is coming out, you know, going hard on his modeling, um, fashion line, clothing line coming out soon. The public relations publicity executive of Multi-Choice Ghana, and Saki, explains how the selection criteria for Big Brother is done in Ghana so interested persons can go by come next year. When um, it's time for auditions, we run radio ads even on Joy. We run um, adverts in the papers. We do press releases. We do communication on Facebook. Um, and, you know, we, we do do a lot of interviews even on the radio stations where they ask us, you know, what's happening, where is it happening and all of that. Um, but what I find is that a lot of people are very nervous about coming for auditions. Anne says multi-choice is impressed with Kata's performance in the Big Brother Star Game reality show. Now, welcome to Sports Brief, where the hockey fraternity today has paid tribute to the veteran hockey player and late president, Professor John Evans, at Amels. On Saturday, the 28th of July, 
A ceremony was organized at the hockey stadium to sign the book of condolence in remembrance of our former president, the late Professor John Evans Fifi Atamels. Former hockey players, the veterans hockey team, fans and sympathizers were also present to sign the book. The president of the Ghana Hockey Association, Oko Nikoijani, paved the way when he signed first, followed by sympathizers of the late hockey fan, the former president of the Republic of Ghana. In a speech read by the president of the Hockey Association, he emphasized on the love the former president had for hockey and sports in general. The founder of the veterans hockey team, where Professor Mills played his hockey, was at the ceremony and shared with Joy Sports how the hockey fraternity will miss the former president. I mean, we'll miss him greatly. We'll miss him greatly. Even though he didn't, he wasn't playing when he became president. But he's always kept us informed of his presence with us all the time. So missing him, that one, we can quantify it in ways. The president of the Ghana Hockey Association, Oko Nikoi Jani, said his days with the president is something he will live to remember forever. Now, the hockey fraternity will definitely miss the late president, but what did we miss today in history? Let's find out on this day. Now, still in some sports stories, the opening ceremony of the London Games featured to the France winner Bradley Wiggins, the Queen, and James Bond. Red arrows flew over the Olympic Stadium to mark the start of the pre-ceremony show, and the Queen arrived in the stadium after a video produced by the BBC showed her being flown there in a helicopter. Now, the three are spectac spectacular uh, image, imagery shown capturing the best of Britain is set to be viewed by a TV audience of 1 billion people. The athletes taking part in the Games led as tradition dictated by the Olympic spiritual home Greece are now making laps of the stadium bearing their national flags and Team Great Britain, Britain will be the last to walk about. Now the beginning of the show, iconic images of London and Britain were beamed to the world and all four countries of the UK were represented in the song. Now still in the Olympics, Ghana's rep for boxing has been declared unfit. Find out more about the story on our bulletin at 11 p.m. Thanks for staying through. Join us at 8 with me, Kemini Nyamani Amano. Have a good night and a great weekend.